And we're back live, Desk of Lady Ada. That's right. It's time for Desk of Lady Ada because um, we're stuck here at home. But the engineering don't stop, won't stop. We are doing electronics every day and now also PPE manufacturing That's right. and import. So uh, at night um, or early mornings, we are at the factory shipping essential electronics for things like ventilators, for things like medical devices. We're also making PPE for face shields. Yeah. We have uh, made sure we made our services available. We got deemed an essential service. We do manufacturing arts, logistical service and engineering. We are helping and trying to do everything we can to fight COVID. Very this is a uh, adorable little toxic this is terrible. Virus. This is a jerk that's ruining everyone's good times. I know. So wash your hands. Wash your hands. Um, if you want, you can ask us questions. Adafruit.it slash discord. Join 17,000 of us. Um, but that is what we are doing. And right now, it is time for some Desk of Lady Ada. The last time we did one was about a year ago. And so uh, since a lot of people have some time at home and uh, they're looking for unique, cool programming online, here it is. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not video gaming, so it's a little bit of a different uh, type of stream. We do streams, cover software, hardware, firmware, electronics. You're going to design a full board on the, you know, one of the next shows. We're going to do yeah, things. Sure. Yeah, you're going to hear about our new products as Lady Ada designs them. And since we're in the middle of a global pandemic, you'll also things like uh, you'll see things like the um, UVC. We're going to do a UVC board, for instance. So yeah. let's uh, let's get it started on uh, what are we going to show tonight? Okay, so tonight, why don't you go to my compi screen? Let's try that out. So um, we merged two days ago. Um, ESP32 S2 support for teeny USB. So the ESP32 is a very popular Wi-Fi microcontroller, uses a tensilica core chip, sometimes dual core, sometimes single core. And what's nice about it, it has Wi-Fi built in, it also has Bluetooth built in, and uh, it's really cheap. It's really inexpensive and it works really well. So it's been a disruptive uh, force in the uh, embedded microcontroller wireless market. Basically made it from, you know, taking it from $20 per Wi-Fi module to $2. And they've come up with a couple different versions since the first one, the ESP8266, they had the ESP32, and then a couple of versions of the ESP32, and now uh, they have the ESP32S2, which is a, a new silicon chip. And one of the neat things about this chip is that it comes with native USB, something that I've really wanted for quite a while because it unlocks a lot of capability. For example, CircuitPython support. Right. Um, we don't port or support CircuitPython on boards that don't have native USB because anyone who's used a microcontroller board that with like MicroPython or Lua or other you know, scripting language um, where you have to you know, you write a script and you upload the script, um, you probably had the experience of like trying to upload that script through like a tool like Ampy or through some like command line or like GUI and it's always, it's always kind of iffy. It's not a great experience. And then if you want to upload stuff like uh, WAV files or bitmaps, that's also really challenging. But if you have native USB, you can have your microcontroller act like a disk drive, like a USB key, uh, that's called mass storage. And then it can also act like a USB MIDI device, so it can do music, yay, or HID, which means it can act like a keyboard or a mouse or a joystick or a game controller. It can do assistive technology with it. So it, native USB is a really powerful peripheral. I really, and it's also one of the ones where it's like, if your microcontroller doesn't have PWM, you can get a PWM chip. If your microcontroller doesn't have analog inputs or outputs, you can get a DAC or an ADC chip. You throw it on SPI. And you, you can pretty much get the data you want. But either you have native USB or you don't. Uh, and if you don't, there's, there's chips that can sort of do USB interface, but they really kind of suck. It's never a good experience, uh, in my opinion. So native USB is where it's at. So these are very new. We got some engineering samples of the ESP32 eval board. So let's look at the over the overhead. That's right. And uh, overhead. it's that's bigger than actual size, but let's uh, let's go to the real overhead. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the module. Um, and you can get these at digikey.com. Uh, they're pre-release, so sign up. They're going to be, I mean, of course, everything is delayed right now, but uh, as soon as they're available, 
um, and I'll show on, on the over on the uh, computer the yeah. how to find the DigiKey part number. Special thanks to DigiKey for helping us out during COVID and getting some electronics out to a lot of people. If we don't have something we can ship to you, make sure you check DigiKey. Yes, very fast shipping. I still buy stuff from DigiKey too. It's like I get my samples. Yep. Um, so this is the uh, Wi-Fi module. And you'll notice it has a regulator here. It's kind of your classic SOT223 regulator. It's got a um, Scilab CP2102, 2104. You know, one of my favorite USB serial converters, really solid converter, goes really fast, um, high speed. Um, NeoPixel, a reset LED and a boot LED. Uh, sorry, a reset button and, and a boot button and uh, either a power LED or signal LED or something. Um, the reason you're like, well, if it has native USB, why do you have the serial port? Well, this is actually a debug port. So you can upload code through the serial interface, just like a normal ESP32. Also, it has the debug output. So when you're developing for um, the native USB port, which is on pins 19 and 20, and you can see I've wired up here one of our handy dandy little micro USB breakouts. Um, I just connected ground, D minus and D plus directly. You can still, uh, you can have this connected to do your debugging, to do your uploading while you have the native USB connected. So let's actually uh, try uploading one of the examples from the Teeny USB ESP32 uh, merge. Thanks to um, IGGR, I can't remember his name, Ivan, uh, William, uh, SpriteTM, and Nathan, who have all helped out with this pull request. Um, thankfully, the ESP32 S2 USB core is uh, it's based on or is a Synopsys core, which we already supported for the ES, uh, for the STM32. So thankfully, like things kind of just sort of worked out once we once we figured out a few bugs. Um, so it's merge. You'll have to install the um, ESP IDF. So um, Espresso decided to make the way you program the ESP chips, you basically have to install their development framework. And it's actually a really easy to use framework once you've installed it and you've got make files. And um, it really improved it a lot. Like a, a, this was extremely easy to set up on Windows. Windows is usually either um, the only thing that's supported or the only thing not supported when you have um, microcontroller development platforms. Like either, either it's only Windows people can do it and it's like usually only Windows 7 or something. Um, or it's like Mac or Linux only, but thankfully they actually, you know, ported everything over to Windows. So um, I'm here in, uh, I forked the TeenUSB repo and here's the example. Um, it's CDC MSC, so that's CDC, that's a um, um, serial port USB. MSC is mass storage and free RTOS, that's the, um, RTOS is the free RTOS is the real-time operating system that runs the the thread of execution for the ESP32 S2. And um, when you install the IDF, it actually gives you some um, scripts uh, like IDF.py. You just give it some commands like build and flash. And um, I just built this, so you're not going to see the whole build process. It takes about a minute or two, but you will see um, the upload process. So now that I've uploaded to it. I can um, just use, actually, well, sorry. I'm going to go to my device manager. Okay, so um, I've got the uh, CP2103, that's the debug port, remember? So I'm going to open that up here in PuTTY, take a look at what's going on, and it's 1500. Okay, so you've got the ESP32 S2 booting here, release candidate four in the ROM. Um, there's also apparently a USB bootloader, but I haven't tried it yet. So I'm still using that hardware bootloader to load the flash. And then now I'm going to, um, so we're gonna go to the overhead real fast. I'll plug in this other USB cable. So this is also going to my computer. And so remember, this is the debug port and programming port through the CP2102 to connect to the ROM bootloader and ROM debug. And then this is the native USB connection. So I'm gonna plug that in. And then over on my computer, I see now a new USB serial device. Ooh, this is nice. So we're getting CircuitPython style. It's getting there, it's getting there. And yeah. then um, if you go to, 
um, my computer, <coughs> my computer view, you have my disk drives, but we also have the um, teeny USB MSC. So again, this is a little RAM disk, it's a demo, just to prove that this works. When I double click it, there's a text file. I can open the text file and you can see this text. It says it's the teeny USB mass storage class demo. So the fact that I could um, double click it, open it, there's a file, I see the file. That means all of the fat translation block transmission is all working. And um, I can also open up Putty again. This time I'm going to connect to the USB serial device, not the debug port. So it's port COM 53. So let's open that up. And then this time you see TNUSB CDC mass storage HID device with free RTOS example. So it gets emitted as soon as you connect. And then when I type, um, the characters get echoed. So normally you would not get an echo character. So that's, that's that. That's pretty much the demo. You've got, you know, CDC working and mass storage working at the same time. There's, I think, um, five endpoints pairs total you can use. So 10 endpoints, five pairs. It's not evenly distributed. There's like seven in, five out, but usually you have one in and one out for a connection. So you could probably do like HID plus mass storage plus MIDI plus like, you know, whatever DFU or something. So you could you can have quite a few connections. Um, I could also try out the HID demo, but I don't know if people had any questions. Uh, yes, people can ask questions in Discord and they can also ask questions, um, you know, pretty much wherever I see it. So uh, is the Feather version coming? Yeah, I'm going to design a Feather version now that I have some working hardware to base it off of. Um, I don't think I'm going to have the debug interface on the Feather, but we'll see. I think, you know, this is very Feather-like, but I think I, I want to have it just be the native USB and you connect, and then the ROM debug will be, uh, you know, accessible on two pins, and then maybe you, if you wanted to do debugging, you would, um, you'd wire it up to a USB to serial converter. Okay. What are some of the applications for this? Can you make a little home, like a little web server, like a? Yeah, this could be a web server. Um, it could be a web client. It has like all the Wi-Fi stack that you know people are used to with the Espresso chipsets. Um, it's just now a single core, and it has native USB. Okay. How many I/O pins does it have? Um, <coughs> it goes up to forty-six, but I think some of them are used. So it says you know there's forty-six pins total. Maybe forty of them are available. Okay. Um, does Espressive release any um, pricing? Yes, you can. And this will go directly into my example. Want me to get your computer? Yeah. So over on my computer, if you search uh, for ESP32 S2 on DigiKey, um, you can. Oh, well, they do have them in stock. Whoa. I know that. Well, they're in stock now, which well, they. Why don't you order some right now? I'm totally. Okay, wait. Order some. Don't. We'll, we'll get. Well, you. I can't because I got passwords. So yeah. So let's uh, okay, let's okay. get you off that screen. Hold on. And then. Uh, I'm gonna order. I'm gonna order ten of these. Okay. Well, let's. Uh, but anyways, so this is um. These are the raw ICs. N next question: Is uh, uh, I squared C and SPI working yet? Um, I have not tried anything except this. I'm pretty sure it'll work because, again, it's the same core, like the 10 silica core and the same peripheral set. So I'm not worried about I squared C or SPI working. All right, why don't you... Uh, Hold on. So I actually yeah. want the... Um, yeah, I just have the device on there if you want to place a quick order before everyone else gets in here. Yeah. No, no, it's, I'm, I'm not worried about it because there's 600 yeah. in stock. So, yeah, go to... Uh, go go to the, back to the computer? Go to the computer. Yeah, it's fine. I'll order this because there's, there's a bunch. So what I actually recommend is to get the, um, so there's the raw chips, but what I would recommend is to get these, um, there's dev boards. So these, these cellulas, that's what I have here, the, the all-in-one dev boards. So you can grab these, um, S-A-O-L-A, cellula. Um, and then let's see. And then the other thing I recommend picking up are these modules. So what's really nice about the expressive chips is that um, you can get, um, sorry, these modules. Turn to stop. These are only a couple bucks. They're $2 a piece, which is like a really great deal. Um, and uh, they come with FCC, CE, 
telic certification. If they don't yet, they will. This might be an engineering sample, but um, you know, if you want to integrate this, th these chips come with all like the flash and the RAM and the capacitors and the crystals and everything, and you just like plop them onto your board, and they look just like the module on this um, dev kit. So I'd get like two dev kits and like a handful of these modules. That's what I'm gonna pick up as soon as we're done here. <laughs> okay. Um, yep, we already answered, will it fit in the feather format? Yes, and then uh, people- I think so. Them. I mean, this module, it's like, I have a feather here, you know, and it, it'll fit. It's just gonna be a double-sided feather, but I think that's okay. People, people are, are using, um, you know, the, the ESP32 feather without issue. So I think it'll fit. Let me tight fit, but it'll fit. Okay. All right, and I think, uh, let me... Yes, yeah, so this is the module, and this is, the whole thing is the Seola. So you'll want the Seola if you're doing development, and you'll want the module if you're doing PCB design. So we'll design a PCB maybe next week. Yeah. Now that I know the... I didn't know the modules were available. They, that's news to me. Well, you gotta go to the DigiKey site. I know, you gotta search. <laughs> All right. Well, that's our uh, desk of Lady tonight. Don't forget, um, we will be shipping essential orders uh, on checkout if this is for COVID-related. Yeah. You can still place orders, everything else. We'll get to it eventually. If you want to support all of us at Adafruit, um, thank you. We are currently um, pausing most operations besides PPE, fulfillment and manufacturing, and manufacturing of essential goods. Um, we are paying everyone. No one has been laid off. No one has been furloughed. Um, there is about 130 of us, so as you can imagine, is it a, it's very expensive. But you can help out. Get a gift certificate now and then spend it later. You can use that on the ESP32 ST yeah. Feather. You can uh, get a Plus account for Adafruit IO. You can sign up for some of the remaining Ada boxes. There's only a few left, but we will be shipping them. We will still be shipping soon. them. Yes. Um, stay tuned during the week for some made New York City factory footage, and then we have a daily photo log of what we do at Adafruit. That's at Adafruit Chronicles on the blog. Um, don't forget on Wednesday, 3D Hangouts at 11 a.m. with Noah and Pedro, and they're also doing a special show and tell before or afterwards. And then Wednesday, we have show and tell for a full hour, 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Wednesday night, we have Ask an Engineer. JP's workshop is at 4 p.m. Eastern on Thursdays, and we also have a show and tell as well. Um, we want to thank DigiKey for helping us out during this time. Thank you, DigiKey. And uh, with so that, go pick up Adafruit stuff and your electronic components of DigiKey. Support them because they're essential business, and yeah. they're also uh, we're also shipping hard. our stuff to them, which uh, they're shipping as well for some of the things. So that's Discolade Ada. Thanks, everybody. See you soon. Hope you enjoyed.